everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name is Casey. And I'm Anthony. And we are Dos Cavazos and we are watching the finale, the last episode of Chernobyl. And yeah, I mean... It's been rough. It's been a rough ride. We've gotten some good kind of banter and some good moments between Boris and Lagazov. And I feel like, you know, they're really showing their friendship and how it kind of had to form under... Pressure. All under the pressure, and... under circumstances that he <laughs> wouldn't really want to be in um but i feel like they're both handling the situation very well yeah, as and best they can anyway yeah there's just been so much sadness in this show and it's they really do a great job of putting you in the moment and letting you feel that sadness um just from all kinds of things that have happened in the show like so many things have just been so sad and it just really puts it into perspective. <laughs> so this is our shortest show that mm -hmm. we've seen so far, but it is the most emotionally draining show, yeah. I will say, we've had to watch. <laughs> it feels like it's watch. been like 10 years. I know, it's only <laughs> our fifth episode. But yeah, it's like what Casey said, it's been, uh, it's been a rough uh, few episodes here. Um, it only seemed like it was getting worse. Um, I'm not sure exactly what else could happen now to make the situation worse. I feel like now it's more so like going to be about like the conclusion ending, of everything yeah. now and like kind of see how where it how it get, gets resolved, especially with like the court stuff with the people yeah. that are going to be on trial now. They also found out that the government might have had an issue in this too because they could yeah. have uh, resolved the issue that may have been the reason why the uh, the reactor blew up in the first yeah, place. Yeah, they could have um, at least let people know. Yeah, but... well, because they didn't want to admit fault. Uh, yeah. They didn't want to see like admit fault. So in the essence, um, them not doing that paired with like some maybe some negligence of some yeah, of the workers overworking the reactor i still feel it like to the point of yeah. yeah and i still feel like a lot of that had to do with the fact that they had like such young people working there yeah. too i mean they haven't they haven't really said it so much but like there was that little part where she was like interviewing them uh where they were like how old are you and you're like 25 but i'm like the senior uh whatever uh -huh. and i'm just like 25 and you're you're in a high position that you have that title so if you haven't already um please don't forget to subscribe uh we are just now finishing this Chernobyl series so we'll have all of these episodes here for you but we also have done The Witcher we've done half of The Mandalorian and we're going to be starting on season four of Better Call Saul next Yay. a little bit more of a lighthearted show yeah. uh, we definitely need that break after this yeah. um, in addition we're also doing our uh, reactions on the rocks mm -hmm. this is going to be ha taking place every Saturday, Saturday which we're currently watching Rick and Morty yeah um, so if you want to see those don't forget to uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you stay yeah. notified and let's check out this final episode and let's finish this crazy tale <laughs> Beautiful moment, but this mm. feels ominous. Mm. It like hurts my heart so bad. Wait, this is in the past. That because I was, was going to say that was him. I saw his hair. Yes. Oh wow! They made her look to make you like think. Yeah. This little problem we have with the safety test. If it's completed successfully, yes, I think promotion's very likely. Who knows, maybe Moscow. Mm. They'll put me in charge once he's gone, and then I'll need someone to take my old job. I would like to be considered. Preparations for the test have gone smoothly. With your approval, uh, we're ready to continue lowering power to... You have to wait. I've just had a call from the grid controller in Kiev. He says we can't lower power any further, not for another 10 hours. A grid controller? Where does he get off to? It's not the grid to... controller's decision, the ad love. So do we have to scrap it or what? No, I don't think so. Well, if we need to wait 10 hours, we wait. I'm running half power, not going to have stability issues. It's safe. We'll maintain at 1600. I'll go home, get some sleep, come back tonight. We'll proceed then. I'll personally supervise the test. And it will be completed. On. KGB? The West is now satisfied that Chernobyl was solely the result of operator error, which it essentially was. <laughs> we have you to thank for that, and we intend to. Mm. So he didn't expose the whole truth. Error of the Soviet mm. Union. Our highest honor. They haven't even given it to me. <laughs> you wasn't a director of the Kachatov Institute. You gave us assurances. 
reactors would be made safe. It's been months. No changes have been made. No changes even discussed. First, the trial. After that, we can deal with the reactors. Is with the tapes? Mm hmm mm hmm At least that's where he was sitting. Yeah. He Looks them. like it's the same scene right here, almost. That was a night, though. Oh, they're just paralleling the, yeah. the scenes. She's Hair's losing hair. Out. I don't know who he was making the tapes for. Yeah. Chokhov is saying they're going to fix the reactors after the trial. Do you believe him? The state will never willingly fix the reactors because acknowledging the problem means admitting that they lied. They will have to be forced. Maybe that's why. It was just like his his assurance. Like, you know, if they don't do it, these yeah. tapes are here and he like left them with somebody. You're going to tell the truth. <laughs> You're going to convince mm. the jury. The Central Committee have invited members of the scientific community to observe the trial. Our colleagues. And when your testimony arrives at the moment of the explosion, that is when our jury will finally hear the truth. They will shoot me. They simply did what had to be done. So have I. So have I. I went willingly to an open reactor. So I've already given my life. Isn't that enough? You did. No, I'm sorry, but it is not. Mm. I get it from her perspective too, though. From both, it's a hard decision. He just wants to be done with it all. Yeah. I mean, he has, and realistically, he has sacrificed so much already, but they just feel like this could happen again, you know, like if nobody says anything. Mm -hmm. All those, the trucks that they were using. Oh, yeah. Wow. And the helicopters that they probably used to drop off the mm -hmm. stuff on the, the roofs. Oh, they have a model of it. It began with, of all things, a safety test. Plant director Viktor Brikhanov signed this document, certifying the completion of the construction of the reactor. As a result of finishing the work before the end of the year, Comrade Brikhanov was awarded Hero of Socialist Labor. Comrade Famin was awarded for valorous labor. Comrade Dyatlov was given an order of the Red Banner. And this document was a lie. In order to sign this certificate, all safety tests had to have been successfully completed, and yet one remained. And the steam spins the turbine oh, here, and the result is electricity. Brikhanov knew that the problem was not solved at all. The backup generators took approximately one minute to reach the speed required to power the pumps and prevent a meltdown. And by that time, it would be too late. Mm -hmm. So we arrive at the safety test. The theory was this. If the facility lost power, the turbine which had been spinning would take some time to slow down and stop. So what if the dying turbine could keep the pumps working long enough to bridge the 60 second gap? <coughs> mm -hmm. Any questions? But a test is only as good as the men carrying it out. And the first time they tried, they failed. The second time they tried, they failed. The third time they tried, they failed. And the fourth time they tried was April 26, 1986. By two in the afternoon, the reactor has been lowered by half and is stable and ready to be reduced to its final output level for the test. 700 megawatts. Power grid officials in Kiev say that they cannot afford a further reduction in electricity until after midnight. They are asking for a 10-hour delay. Competent management would have insisted on cancelling the test. These three men allowed it to proceed. Mm. At midnight, there is a shift change. Oh, that's him. You know the test they're supposed to run? The turbine rundown, they tried it last year. They couldn't do it on the day shift, so they've given it to us. We don't know what it is. It's fine. We take it down to 700. Yeah, love. He's going to be supervising. Are we supposed to do those or not? He says to follow the cross down instructions. So then why are they crossed down? Oh my god. No. Now, uh, is it too much to ask that you all know what you're doing? Well, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Stelechuk? Yes. Mm. Kirschenbaum? No. Uh, I haven't reviewed. We only just found out we're there. Review it. Or you can just do what I tell you. I think even you, stupid as you are, can manage that. I should have waited for the shift that new. The turbine off while the reactor's still running. Shut the fuck up 
and do your job. Oh my god. I wish she was saying gross and competent. Mm -hmm. It's okay, I'm with you. Oh my god, you're really prepared. I want you to imagine that he has been told nothing of his mission into space until the moment that he is on the launch pad. All he has is a list of instructions that he has never seen before, some of which have been crossed out. This is exactly what was happening in the control room of Reactor 4. The night shift had not been trained to perform the experiment. They hadn't even been warned it was happening. Leonid Toptunov, the operator responsible for controlling and stabilizing the reactor that night, was all of 25 years old. Mm -hmm. And his total experience on the job, four months. Oh, my God. Oh, this that is the gave human me chills problem created by the delay. But inside the reactor core, something far more dangerous is forming. A poison. I really like how they're taking us through it. Oh my oh gosh, my so nerve-wracking. This shot is amazing though mm -hmm. too, because it makes you really put yourself in your perspective. But you don't need to be a nuclear scientist to understand what happened at Chernobyl. You only need to know this. The reactivity which generates power either goes up or it goes down. This is the Invisible dance that powers entire cities without smoke or flame. And it is beautiful when things are normal. Mm. Xenon reduces reactivity. This is the poison comrade Homute mentioned. When the core is running at full power, it burns the Xenon away before it can cause a problem. But because of the delay, Chernobyl Reactor 4 has been held at half power for 10 hours. The xenon did not burn away. It built up, poisoning the core. Mm -hmm. You can't understand how a stalled nuclear reactor could lead to an explosion. I don't blame you. The men who did, didn't understand it either. Mm -hmm. Should have finished by now. The following protocol for reduction rate. You're procrastinating. <gasps> Ten other men in this plant would have done it already. <sighs> If the outlaw knew to do, why didn't he just do it? Come get me when these old women are ready. Oh yes, my gosh, he left. Oh my gosh, they didn't even have any sort of supervision. Whoa, 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 slow. Ooh. <gasps> I didn't Ooh. move any rods there. Uh-oh. You can hear it, and that's a scary sound in the background. They don't even know what to do, do they? If you thought the call was poison, then you didn't do everything right because you're choking my reactor. Get it back up. Oh, <gasps> Yikes. What did you do? I, I, I did what you said. I switched. Look at it! <gasps> no, we're doing the test tonight. Raise power for 700. Well, we can't raise the power from here for rules. Don't talk to me about rules. If we fall from 80%. No, no, we fell from 50% of power. 50%. The worse. rules don't say 50. There is no rule. Comrade the Adlov. I apologize, but what you're saying makes no sense. Raise the power. No. <gasps> I won't do it. It isn't safe. Oh my gosh. So it dropped all the way and then they want to raise it back and then do the test still? It won't work anywhere ever again. I'll see to it. I think oh, you know man. I will see to it. He did see to it in a way that's terrible. I would like you to record he your command. never will work ever again. Raise the power. I wasn't in the room when they raised the power. If you weren't there, then where were you? Red gas off. You are a witness, not a prosecutor. I will ask the questions here. <laughs> if you weren't in the room, then where were you? He asked the same question. The toilet. No, Comrade Dee, I'd love you were in the room. You ordered them to raise the power. This is a fact. <coughs> uh. <coughs> I mean, it would make sense. It had just as much yeah. exposure as he did. And he was coughing up blood before he ended up killing himself. Did I make him else? I think so. Not a version of it. That's weird. <laughs> I hoped that one day I would matter, but I didn't. Mm. I just stood next to people who did. That's not true, though. He did matter. Scientists like you. Everything we asked for. Everything we needed. Men, material, lunar rovers. <laughs> Who else I love the friendship they developed. They heard me, but they listened to you. It's true. Oh, you were the one who mattered most. 
The reactor is drowning in poison. To make matters worse, the reactor isn't hot enough to produce sufficient steam. The only way to safely raise power from this state is to do it very, very slowly over the course of 24 hours. Mm. The Atlov wants it done now. They begin pulling control rods out. There were 211 control rods in Reactor 4. Akimov and Toptonov completely withdrew 205. Remember, mm. control rods are the brakes on this car. It's one in the morning. The test is minutes away. Yeah, sure. Well, we have barely enough steam as it is. The turbine is going too slow for the test to deliver any valid results. And if we add more water, there will be even I less. I said steam. it's enough. I know what I'm doing. Steliachuk. Is he doing this because he wants that promotion? Yeah, main pump's all connected. Now, the steam in the separator drum is too low. Five atmospheres. All right, let's all help him. Get it up as best you can. The problem they were facing was not solvable. The power was too low. The water was too high. The test was already ruined. The results would have been useless. But the Atlov didn't care. All he wanted to do was report a completed test. Yuvchenko, a mechanical engineer, is in his office. That was a guy from the very first episode. Benavozchenko, reactor section foreman, is in the refueling hall, high above the 1,000 ton steel reactor cover. Um. Calculation operators are in the pump room. None of them have been told about the test. None of them know what is about to happen. Based on the absence of sufficient control rods, the computer is recommending that the reactor be shut down. Well, of course it's saying that. It doesn't know we're running a test. Oh, my gosh. Another few minutes, it'll all be over. We did everything right. Well, that's what they were saying at the beginning. Cinegraph on. The episode. First episode, I mean. Closing. With every decision, they have pulled this reactor back like a slingshot further than anyone has ever pulled. Now the test begins. Balance immediately swings in the opposite direction. In less than a second, reactivity increases. Power is rising. There's nothing left to stop it. Mm. What did you do? <laughs> what you told them? In every control room of every nuclear reactor in the world, there is a button with one single purpose, the scram or instantly shut down the reaction. In Soviet reactors, that button is called AZ-5. You press AZ-5, all of the control rods insert at once, and the reaction is stopped. But I haven't finished. I still have more evidence to give. It's not necessary. Your testimony is concluded. Oh. Your Honor. Court is now adjourned. Uh, we will resume tomorrow. Then finish. Oh. Comrade Sabina. Let him finish. Oh. Oh, I. They listen to him, so uh -huh. they respect him. Yeah. That's your chance. Oh, are you going to do it? Or... The Atlov broke every rule we have. He did these things believing there was a failsafe. AZ5. A simple button to shut it all down, but in the circumstances he created, there wasn't. The shutdown system had a fatal flaw. At 1.2340, Akimov engages AZ-5. <sighs> the fully withdrawn control rods begin moving back into the reactor. These rods are made of boron, which reduces reactivity, but not the tips. The tips are made of graphite, which accelerates reactivity. Why? Why? For the same reason our reactors do not have containment buildings around them, like those in the West. For the same reason we don't use properly enriched fuel in our cores. For the same reason, we are the only nation that builds oh water-cooled, graphite-moderated reactors with a positive void coefficient. It's cheaper. <gasps> oh, shit. Uh. <clears throat> the first part of the rods that enter the core are the graphite tips, and when they do, 
the reaction in the core, which had been rising, skyrockets. Graphite tips are fixed in position, endlessly accelerating the reaction. Chernobyl reactor four is now a nuclear bomb. 123.42. Perovozchenko looks down on the enormous steel lid of the reactor and sees the impossible. The control oh rod and fuel God. channel caps, which each weigh 350 kilograms, are jumping up and down. Oh my gosh, that's so he runs scary. to warn the control. We do not know how high the power went. We only know the final reading. <gasps> Reactor 4, designed to operate at 3,200 megawatts, went beyond 33,000. Oh, he's like. <laughs> the pressure inside the core can no longer be held back. At long last, we have arrived. 123.45, explosion. In the instant the lid is thrown off the reactor, oxygen rushes in. It combines with hydrogen and superheated graphite. The chain of disaster is now complete. Because the guy had just run in and was saying... No one in the room that night knew the shutdown button could act as a detonator. Because it was kept from them. Comrade Gasov, you're contradicting your own testimony in Vienna. The testimony in Vienna was a lie. <laughs> oh my god. I lied. Every lie we tell incurs a debt to the truth. Sooner or later, that debt is paid. Wow, that was brave. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine what he feels like. I mean, he gave up everything. Like, he gave up it all when he went there. But he gave out what little precious time he had left, too, which is just... You're not brave. You're not heroic. You're just a dying man who forgot himself. I know who I am. I know what I've done. When the bullet hits your skull, what will it matter? Why? It will matter you why. You saved lives. More lives, possibly. No. Your testimony today will not be accepted by the state. It will not be disseminated in the press. It never happened. But the yeah. colleagues heard it. You will live, however long you have. What if they killed them? But not as a scientist. Not anymore. Maybe that's why you had to make the tapes. You keep your... Oh, no. What if that's the last time they ever saw each other? It's just crazy, the events that all had to have taken place for him to have fell on the sword. Yeah. Be a scientist is to be naive. This has to be the tapes. We are so focused on our search for truth, we fail to consider how few actually want us to find it. And this... At last is the gift of Chernobyl. Where I once would fear the cost of truth, now I only ask, what is the cost of lies? I just, oh wow, it's true that he had. She rec rep represented. Uh -huh.
born in Sherbina, died on August 22nd, 1990. So he lived a couple more years after. Four that. years and four months after he was sent to Chernobyl. Wow, that was done together for their roles oh in the Chernobyl disaster. Victor. Yeah. Yeah, Liv, Nikolai. So oh, ten, ten years. Ten years early. Wow. After his release, Nikolai Fallman returned to work at a nuclear <sighs> power in Russia. <gasps> wow. I honestly thought that they would be killed. Yeah, Love died from radiation related illness in 1995. 64. That was him. Yeah. Budmachuk's body was never recovered. He was permanently entombed. Oh my gosh. Oh wow, that's horrible. Firefighter's colleague still remains in the basement of the Pupiat house. Still dangerously radioactive. So it's wow. Fifty-eight. Oh 50, my 64. gosh. And a daughter, Ludmila, suffered multiple strokes. Doctors told her she would never be able to bear a child. Mm -hmm. So did she really did, oh, husband and daughter, okay. Oh man, they were wrong? Did she have another child? Oh my oh. gosh! Oh wow. People who watched from the railway bridge just reported that none survived. Yeah, the bridge of death, you I've, I've that heard of that You mentioned the first episode, before. the term. 400 miners worked around the clock for one month to prevent a total nuclear meltdown. It is estimated that at least 100 of them died before the age of 40. Oh my gosh. Around the clock for one month. Yeah. It has been widely reported that the three divers who drained the bubbler tanks died as a result of their... Oh my gosh. All three survived! Two are still, Two are still alive. alive! Oh, that's... Oh, wow! I'm sad for the one who's not still alive, though. 600 people were constructed to serve in the exclusion zone. Despite widespread accounts of sickness and death as a result of radiation, the Soviet government kept no official records. <sighs> Man. Tiny region of Ukraine, in large Valeria. known as the exclusion zone, ultimately encompassed 2,600 square kilometers. It's so eerie to look at. 300,000 people were displaced from their homes. They were told this was temporary. Look at that. That looks so... It's just overgrown and it is still forbidden to return. It looks like... Oh my gosh, it's just insane. That was episode five. So many wow. answers. Wow.
and man that last few scenes this, there describing yeah. like about like some of like the oh my gosh it's so, so upsetting that like it never changed still said at 31 I know. When, like they just reported the initial death toll probably yeah. from that first night i would imagine i can't even believe like so many people gave their lives to help so many people were affected I just can't even believe it. This whole last episode was amazingly well The done. acting by Jared yeah. Harris like, I, was impeccable yeah. when he was up there like mm -hmm. pretty much stating his case as to what happened. Wow. That was like, it I, was so, yeah. I was so enamored with every word he spoke. I was just like, wow. I was like, it was a trance. I was yeah. almost, I was like, oh my God. And then like that, it was beautifully shot when he was walking up. You just really yeah, felt the dynamic. Like it was kind of like shaky. Yeah. yeah. It was done masterfully. Wow. This series was just... Wonderful. An amazing, amazingly done. Yeah. Off of just horrible events. Yeah. And I'm honestly so glad I watched it just uh, because, like, I've never knew the events really. I just knew it was an explosion, but I didn't really. I knew it caused, you know, radiation, yeah. and and some people had like, you know, had died from mm -hmm. it, but I never knew the severity of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so glad that I was able to watch this, so that I do now know about this. It's crazy to think yeah. about. I really like how in this episode, how they kind of took you through pretty much almost exactly what happened. Night, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like time by time. And it really helped explain it, especially to those of us who don't really understand. Yeah, I was up, um, confused up in the last episode. I was yeah. like, are they going to actually tell us? Yeah, uh, they did such a great job of explaining it to us in layman's terms. Um, and they just took it, you know, step by step. And we were able to understand what actually happened, what you know the events leading up not only the, workers, the humanity yeah. or the human events but also the you know reaction what was happening scientifically as well we understood why Dyatlov was acting the way he was we understood that the night shift was not prepared and no one was because prepared, it was yeah. yeah and it was meant to be happening earlier and then it had to be pushed back and it was like and they didn't find out until they walked in the door yeah. like it's just it's insane they, and they have no experience not in doing that try to do that test then Anyway, but I... And then the workers try to warn him, but yeah. then he just pretty much dismissed yeah. them. That uh, was super upsetting, too, because... It was uh, so they, upsetting. They mentioned in the last episode, too, how, like, you know, there was incompetence throughout the, the workers yeah. and stuff. But then they mentioned about, like, the whole aspect of, like, the government covering up the actual reactor and, like, the, the safety measures that were overlooked for the cost yeah. purposes. And I thought it was going to be more so about that, but, you know, there was still, like, obviously gross incompetence, but... It was mostly because of their supervisor, yeah. and it was mostly because obviously he wanted. I am assuming he really wanted that promotion or yeah, to be considered or he, he for that, that promotion. He wanted that test to be done. Maybe I think that the guy above him, I forgot his name, really was like pushing him to get the test done as well. Because I think he was going to get another yeah. role. Yeah, so too, it was just like role. this chain of command just coming down, trickling down all the way to the bottom. And unfortunately, those at the bottom did yeah. not know what they were doing. But he also mentioned something, too, that, like, he always thought, like, you know, at the back of his head that he had that safe switch. Like, you know, yeah. if everything all went to oh, shit, they could still that press switch, that switch. They didn't, and he didn't even know about that either. So it was just, yeah. like, pretty much everything that could go wrong did went go wrong. wrong. And it's awful. It's terrible. It's horrible. And I'm so sad about it. Um, but... You know, this was just wonderful. I feel like it did such a great job, too. Because um, a lot of people, especially nowadays, you know, because this event kind of took place... I this mean, it wasn't, I was born. it wasn't a long time ago, but compared to us, before me, too, obviously. Well, I guess oh. y'all wouldn't know that. Yeah, but <laughs> I, was, I was born in the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> so this took place before we were born, and I'm pretty... The Soviet Union disbanded... 91. Yeah. It just does a great job of showing those of us who weren't alive during Chernobyl or don't have a lot of knowledge about what it really was like it's during like the it. severity of the event. Yeah. Because um, the stuff I've, you know, read it online, it doesn't really put it into perspective until you see it. And just the visual aspect of seeing it was just, you know, a completely different experience. So. And I actually read, like, in a lot of you guys' comments that they actually toned down yeah. the severity of, like, the radiation know, yeah. or, like, how people were affected I because of it. Ugh, I couldn't even imagine horrible. because, obviously, what we saw was horrible yeah. in and of itself. So to imagine that even worse, oh. it's just unimaginable, kind of like what Casey said. Yeah. Um, but I just, I thought this was great. I'm so glad that they created this series, um, like I said earlier, but just yeah. to bring it to... To people, not only people who were there and alive during the time, maybe, 
um, just people all over the world. So I think it did a really good job at honoring, even though we don't know obviously everyone specifically who was involved mm -hmm. in it, to really honor their their memory. Yeah, I think, and, their and I feel like yeah, there's so many people that had to do this work yeah. without actually having yeah. no, any knowledge and, of like, oh yeah, like why did this happen? Yeah. Why did I get put into this situation? Yeah. And, and regardless of if they chose to or not, I feel like it's still heroic. So. Yeah. It's so well done. Um, I'm glad we watched it. I'm very glad we watched it. All right, guys. So now that one chapter and one series has closed, we are going to be moving on to our next series, which is going to be Better Call Saul. Uh, we are going to start at season four, um, mm -hmm. as we have already seen the first three seasons. We really love Better Call Saul. We love Breaking Bad. It's yeah, probably my do. favorite show of all time, in all honesty. Um, yeah. So we're really excited to watch that with you guys here, uh, to see our reactions as well. And obviously, we're leading up into season five, which is coming out next month. So yes. we're really excited to be able to continue that with mm -hmm. live series that actually has is going to be airing yeah. currently with people who are going to be watching it. So that's super exciting mm -hmm. to see because I think we've only, we did that a little bit with The Witcher, but we were kind of a little bit delayed in yeah, that one. Yeah, we were a little bit behind. Yeah, so because we're, we're still trying to catch up with The Mandalorian. We were watching The Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be really excited to watch another live show with you guys. Uh, we're really super excited for that, including our reactions on The Rocks, which take place every Saturday, which we are currently watching Rick and Morty. So guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that bell so you can stay notified for all of our future videos. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.